Hi chaps, how are you all doing today? Hope you're all well and uh, what I'm going to do in today's video is basically show you um, the hairspray chipping technique and what it's all about. Um, if I'm not going to do any sort of the construction or anything like that um, but I am going to show you in the next couple of clips start to finish on the actual hairspray chipping technique itself and how simple it is and uh, and how it turns out and you know we get some uh, some ideas and things on, on how to how it's done okay so I'm going to use the little uh, Panzer Kampfwagen 2 of FSG for it and uh, we'll start off and I'll just zoom down to the bench and um, we'll show you the first part and you know over the next uh, couple of clips within this video I will show you each step step by step Okay, so we'll zoom down to the bench and we'll start off with the first step. Okay, right, lads. The first step, as you know, the first step obviously is the construction and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to go into that because everybody knows how to actually basic make, make a model and make the kit. This is uh, where you go from there. So it's made, and I have it coated in what I want to be the under color, the, the color that shows true underneath the chips. For this, I'm using to me as XF9 red okay and that will be the uh, the red primer okay on this uh, on this particular vehicle now you give it a good coating over everything of that okay next step is you give it a glass coat I use this I use to me as again x22 clear okay which is a, a to me as glass coat so, give me two seconds, what I'll do is, I'll pause this, and I'll fill up the airbrush and get everything ready, and we'll show a little bit of spraying, because, you know, why not? So, you have to excuse the noise, lads, I've, my, my compressor can get uh, pretty noisy, but um, here we've got some of our clear, X22 clear, and just get it flowing. Now, there is no need to go all the way in there unless I'm actually going to chip in there. So only the areas that you know you're going to chip actually need to be chipped glass coated. You know? So I'm going to be chip chipping along the top. I don't know exactly where, so I do the whole top. giving it a nice good coating of it. We want to protect that nice colour underneath. So when we start chipping away with the paint, we're not taking off that and going down to the bare plastic. Okay? We want to keep this lovely uh, undercoat. So when the chip the chip is sort of the paint is always chipped off and it's gone down to the undercoat. So all we're doing is we're giving it a protection layer, okay? That's the only reason we're doing it. And the glass coat works an awful lot better than a dull coat. Now, if dull coat is all you've got, then use the dull coat. But glass coat is the best for it. Okay. And 
definitely be keeping up that uh, storage bin and this here. There's another storage bin there at the back, across the back of it, and on the exhaust that will definitely be kept in the stuff. The engine deck. Engine inspection hatches and things. They will all have shipping done to them. No, I'm not going to overly ship it, but because I don't know exactly where I'm going to ship, and you can use masking fluid for this, or not masking, yeah, yeah, you can use masking fluid, but I prefer this method. I tried it with sort of lots of other little different things to use on it. But this way, it gives us a nice effect, and you can actually, when you even look in closely at it for the finish, you can see that it is actually the tape, it's actually the, 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 the paint is actually chipped away. Which is what you want to show, you know. You want to show wear and tear and the paint is actually chipped off it. Rather than painted on. You know. It does give a nicer effect than the, uh, the painted on chipping. It is a bit of fat, it is a bit of work, but you know you get the results and the results are quite nice enough. Like I said, all you're doing is just giving it a little protection coat onto your uh, onto the rock that you've already done. No, I'll just go down here onto that. Right, and that's the hull. Simple as that, nicely protected. Leave that dry. Oh, right there. A little toilet. This is a great little kit to show it, uh, show the, the technique on because it's so nice and small. And you don't have to do big, large chipping areas. And I'll be doing this in small little chipped off areas. And if you can do it small, you can do it big. But if you're going to do it big, then you can't do it small. And any of the videos that I've watched in the past, I've really only showed it for sort of chipping off large areas that showing on, on larger models and things. But to me, sometimes less is more. So the, you know, the, the subtle chipping, we call it that, subtle, subtle chipping. Excuse me, though, if I'm not always in view with the camera, so sometimes I'll be moving it away and chatting away to it and not really just looking at what I'm doing rather than looking at the, uh, the screen to make sure I've got everything in. No, we won't be, we won't be chipping the guns. There's our, there's our turret, the turret bin, all nice and glass coated. And now we'll move on and we'll do the, the wheels. Now we just need a, just a little bit there in the centre of each of these. Oh, I don't even need to take it off the yoke. Just a little bit of uh, protection on our paint surface. That's it, man. Simple as that. Uh, right, so now we've got this, uh, let me see what this is. Just a little bit over split, just to make sure that we've got uh, where we want to get our, uh, our glass coat. Okay. 
rubber spray that and a little over spray on that as well. Okay, so now we've got it glass coated. What do we do next? Basically we leave the, the glass coat dry and then we move on to the next step which I will show you in the next clip. Right lads, here we are back and we've got our um, our little tank uh, all nice and uh, dry now from the uh, from the glass coat. So our next step is to add the hairspray. I use the cheapest you can possibly get purely because you mean you don't need like this is a, a natural hold. You don't need natural hold, firm hold, all these kind of things. Just the cheapest, cheapest of cheap that you can possibly get. So what you do is you decant it into a little cup. Remember now this stuff does uh, it does kind of smell a bit. You know, if you can get the um, scent free stuff, all the best, all the better. So, you can get your bit of hairspray, decant it into your airbrush. Alright, turn on your compressor, unless your compressor is already turned on, I don't have to tell you all that kind of stuff. And basically, simple as that, just spray it on. Good liberal coating all over of hairspray. Alright. Get it into all the little areas that you know you're going to chip. Doesn't matter if it goes into areas that you're not going to chip, because you're going to be painting over it anyway, and when it sort of totally seals in and all that, it's not going to affect the paint. Um, it's only fake it's only seems to affect any area that you uh, you do the next step to which we'll get on to, shall we say, well not the next step, the step after that. <laughs> It'll only affect when you uh, start adding water, okay? It reacts with the water and um, it dissolves the paint and it makes the paint flick, flick off. But the chem I showed it some kind of chemical reaction there in that, but I haven't the faintest idea of what it does. Alright, so make sure we give it a good liberal coating of hairspray. So I'll continue on with this now and uh, make sure that you give it a good liberal coating of hairspray. Then leave the hairspray dry for about an hour or two, not too long, about an hour or two. Just so that it, it, it's nice and dry and nice and sticky and, and in place. Okay, so we'll kind of pause it at that. I'll finish off getting all this ready and then we'll be on to the next step. Okay. So here we are lads. The hairspray has now dried, it's had an hour and a half drying time, that's all it needs, it doesn't even really even need that, it dries in fair fast. So our next step now is to give it its uh, it, it's, its next colour, the colour that we're actually going to chip off. So, um, like I said, I'm going to do this as an American captured one, and the Americans did capture them actually, they captured some in Tunisia and they were using them as uh, little patrol vehicles and things like that. There's uh, pictures on the internet, you can find them. But this one is going to be captured in Europe. And uh, it's a kind of a what if and all this, that and the other. And if any river coat is out there, are going to start whinging and wailing. I don't care, I don't care. So uh, the colour I'm going to give this is XF67 NATO Green. So I've given it a shake and I've added some to my uh, airbrush. So now we'll just turn on the compressor. Let the air build up in that for a little few minutes and we'll give it its uh, its coat of green. So, now, oops, well done John. I usually, when I'm spraying, I bring out a second mat, or my old mat, the old uh, cutting mat that I had, and I use that now as a little base so I don't get any more. Get the, my cutting mat any dirtier than it needs to be. So, a little bit of a test. And we'll get it green. Oh. Oops, there's a big spit. I suppose I should have uh, kind of prepared for that. So, we'll stick on a nice coat of the green. Like I said, native green. It's a nice and bright colour. 
but it will be darkened up with the uh, with the weathering and things like that. So that's why I use the native green. That's why I like the native green because it's nice and light, and you can darken it up. Because when you if you use the olive drab or darker or green, and then you start giving it dark washes and weathering it and things like that, it will only make it darker and darker and darker. And it depends on what colour green you want on it, really. Um, you know, whether you want it dark or you want it light. That's up to you. You know, unless you're doing a historical specific one. You know, and then you stick to the actual colours that are needed and all this, that and the other. But, in my experience in military vehicles, and I've had quite some, I've 22 years uh, service with the Army, and vehicles that even came out of the factory and were all painted at the same time. After a couple of months, and it depends on the use that they're getting, the variations in colour really, really does show up. You know, whether they've been used on the range, whether they've just, you know, never really been out of, um, in, in, in muck. Uh, depends how many times it's been washed. Depends how it's kept. So, the, the, you know, if it's been sunny climate and it's been out in the sun and the other one has been kept inside in the garage, obviously the one that's been out in the sun and all that has got lighter. Because the sun does affect paint, as we all know, if it's a car and things like that, after a couple of months or a year or two, it's not the same colour as it was when you bought it. So, I'll continue on with this, and I, you know, you don't need me to, you don't need to see me spraying a whole vehicle. But you're getting the idea. What we'll do is we, we give that a full green coat and we'll make it nice and green. So, I'll catch you up in the next little clip where I'll have it all green, and we can start on the chipping. Right, lads. So there she is, all painted up in the NATO green, still wet as you can see so we're going to leave that dry for a couple of hours now I usually leave it dry for about about three or four hours uh, you don't want it to fully cure but at the same time you don't want it wet either um, so I'll see you now in the next clip and we'll start with the um, with the actual chipping itself okay so so far what have we done we've got uh, the base coat down which is the uh, the undercoat I used uh, hull red for that. Then we gloss coated that in. Then we've given it a coat of hairspray. And then finally we've given it um, the XF67 NATO green, which is our, our top coat. And that's the coat we're going to chip away. So, on the next one, now like I said, I'm going to leave this dry for a couple of hours. On the next one, we'll start the chipping. Okay, so, catch you on the next clip. Right lads, here we're back for the final step of the uh, hairspray chipping. What you need for this step, you'll need some kitchen paper, you'll need some cut up, small, you'll need some water and a small paintbrush. Now other people will tell you you use toothbrush, hard brush, whatever. I mean these are all different ways of doing it. This is my way of doing it. It's not the right way, it's not the wrong way, it's my way, okay? So, we'll start. There's our uh, painted kit, whatever you want to use. And it's had its undercoat, glass coated over that, hairspray, then the coat that we're going to actually chip, right? So, we'll start off, and what we do is, we'll, say, we'll start on the top of this little section here. Right, and we'll just we'll just wet that. Right, I like to keep it nice and small and do it in small little areas. Okay. Uh, if it gets a little bit too wet, use one of your pieces. Just touch it off there. Just damp. Remove some, you know, any of the excess water that goes into the plate. You don't really want it. So we just move into 
with there like that. Now, if we can see, right, all I've been doing is rubbing very, very gently the water. You don't have to scrape. Let the water do the job and the brush and the constant little rubbing off. What it does is it kind of gets in under the paint. Which is what you want it to do. Now the thing is, nothing happens for ages, but when it starts, it starts very, very fast. And it, uh, it'll kind of creep up on you if you're not careful. So. See, it is slowly starting to get it under there and remove the paint. starting to come off now. So once it starts to come off, get a small bit of tissue and dab. Never scrape, never pull it across because all you do is then you pull off more paint than you actually want off. And if you look there, we've started our chipping. So we'll move away from that and we move up to here. to remove the paint. Here, you see the paint is coming off. Keep your brush nice and clean. And there we go. On the edges and along any raised detail comes off very very fast. Once it starts to come off like I said Keep dabbing it with bits of tissue. Never scrape. And there you go. See it? Starting to do a bit. So I'll do a bit more now. I'll pause this. I'll do a bit more. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, continue on. Right, I've done another little bit there. And one thing I forgot to say, actually, another handy little item to use. Are these cocktail sticks or toothpicks, whichever you want to call them. Now this area here is nice and wet and you can kind of see you can little scrapes in. Now you don't have to go very very hard on them but you do have to dab it off afterwards and you see little scrapes there okay and along the side and what it also does is it lightens the paint in areas I'm going to go to this side now and only work in a little area at a time and when you nearly finish that area another handy little tip right 
the paint is now is going to start moving coming off that very very fast right well in the next couple of minutes shall we say right get a nice layer of water down but I'm going to go onto the engine deck now and I'm just going to wet the deck down okay just get it wet a nice big area that we want to we want to chip up I'm not too worried about that because it's going to be a different color anyway okay so nicely wet down and let the water do its work whatever it does whatever the chemical reaction that the water does on it like I said this area here and this box would actually wear off you know down along the edges corners see it starting to come off already on the edges and it was scraping on the top on the hinges If you overdo it and your brush is a bit too um, too firm, too too rough, you will end up removing far too much. And I want this nice and um, subtle, you know. Sometimes less is more. You want to give it an overall worn look, as opposed to. Uh, something that's been through the, the rigors and abuse and time you know remember time isn't the uh, the issue with, uh, with military stuff it's more use you know it hasn't sort of rusted over time or damaged over time it's damaged because of use and you know soldiers aren't very careful with their equipment to get used and abused that area is nice and wet now so if it's starting to come off so I'll give this a couple of little scratches and there a nice big scratch there some more little scratchy work there another wet some of the tissue just to dab it off because what the water the water will keep working and it will keep softening the paint and what the hairspray will do is it'll kind of speed up the softening process of the paint and make it look more worn now if you look at that that looks worn as opposed to you know damaged or abused which is what you want to give it you want to give it a nice subtle little um, little workings now as you see there the, the area that we, we, we pre-wetted pre-moistened <laughs> starting to kind of soften you can see it it's softening right, so we sorry I'm, I'm, I'm out of shot there I forgot I was out of shot I beg your, I beg your pardon I do apologize for that all right Once you start to see the red coming through, just move away from that area. Little grills like this now would get a fair old bit of it. I 
and I prefer to use, like I said, I prefer to use the softer brush than the harder brush because you can, to a certain degree, you can control what you remove. some areas it's even gone down to the bare plastic but we can start we can fix that at a later stage and the weathering section then we pause the, uh, the video and I'll go on and do some more you don't want me to s you don't need to see sort of every little bit of me doing this you've seen how it's done and for a finish then you, you, you get to see the overall effect you know and then you can decide for yourself if that's if that's what you want to do Panels, around hatches, kind of do is you want it to kind of get in underneath the paint and bubble up that area now like I said it depends on what level of chipping you want to do whether you want it uh, extremely chipped whether you just want it to give it that worn worn look abused and battered <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So there's there's some of it done, as you can see. What I'll do is I pause. I'll do the rest of it, and then we'll have a look at it for a finish. Okay. Here I'm back with a nice mess made. <laughs> as you can see, it is quite messy. It is quite a messy job. Hence the old uh, paper towels, which comes in dead handy. Right. So here's our. Um, Or chassis or main body of the tank and uh, as you can see like I said I was going to give it a subtle chipping nothing too major and even here where it's gone down to the actual um, the plastic where it's taken away the gloss coat and the undercoat and everything else as well 
it just goes to show you how strong some of that uh, hairspray can actually get into. So you got to do it nice and slow and take your time. But overall, you get a nice effect. So there's the uh, there's the main body of it. There's the turret. You do it on sort of the edges, you know, around hatches, you know, around the ring there and that, and you know. A lot of uh, the heavy transit areas as well, you know, like the, the engine deck and stuff like that. Um, there's the turret. If we can see there, oh, we might have a little bit too much. Right? We take that back. No, no, no. There we go. Yeah. But you'll see what I mean. You're getting a nice uh, overall effect. Move them off the way now, and we can have a look at the wheels idlers and things and they are grand and worn and everything else as well right so the next step for this is to leave this dry let it dry properly this will have to probably you know, cure in properly now so give that a good overnight to dry and what you do then is we'll go on to the next step and I'll do cover the, that'll be for this video this will be the end because it's the, uh, the chipping part of it in the next video I'll continue on with the uh, little pens or two We'll do the detail painting and we'll do the decal. We get it glass coated and then put on the decals. And I'll show you how to kind of damage up the decals a bit and uh, without destroying them altogether, dotting them up and stuff. And then we'll go on to sort of the general weathering, giving it a, a wash, a dark wash, um, some mud effects and things like that. and. I won't be using many products. The only kind of product I will be using is um, my, this Citadel Agrax Earthshade, which is a product I use for practically everything. I use it for figures, and I use it for dotting up little spots like this as well. So, I'll catch you up in the next video, lads. That's the end of this one on hairspray chipping. And uh, I'll do it, like I said, I'll do it. It'll probably be over two, maybe even three videos where I'll do the full weathering sort of section on this little pens or two. Okay lads, I'll catch you up in the next one. Stay safe and don't forget, go out and buy yourself a kit, build it, enjoy it and don't be afraid to uh, to, to weather it up. Don't be afraid to kind of damage it up and make it look uh, worn. It doesn't all have to be new and shiny. Okay lads, I'll catch you up in the next one. Stay safe. See you soon.